What you've been looking at is the intermediate result of a fairly complex project. And the secret to making such a complex project work is to work in different layers, almost like a lasagna. At the bottom layer of this project, we find the light-dependent resistors. When more light falls onto them, they, they lower their resistance and as a result, their output voltage drops. We need to somehow measure this output voltage from each of the sensors. And for that, I will use a simple programmable microcontroller known as an Arduino. You can run small programs on an Arduino. You can think of it as a very weak computer. Arduino also has an analog input pin or a few analog input pins where it can measure voltages and that's what we will use. The problem is that Arduino cannot measure 16 sensor voltages since it does not have 16 input pins. So we will need a kind of funnel to reduce the 16 sensor outputs to less Arduino inputs. And the way this can be done without losing information is by using a kind of fast rotating switch that can select different inputs over time. If you rotate the switch over time, you can measure all sensor voltages one by one, just not exactly at the same time. Selecting the desired sensor to read out has to be done electronically as well, since it would not be a very musical activity if you had to rotate some switch manually all the time. And luckily electronics has such a component and it is called an analog multiplexer. Each sensor has to be connected to an input pin of the multiplexer. And then Arduino has to use some uh, connections to select the desired sensor value, so to rotate the switch. And Arduino can then measure the selected sensor value on one of its analog input pins. When it measures this voltage, it will convert it to a number. And every time uh, we've read all the 16 sensor in, uh, outputs, the Arduino will then send these 16 numbers to the computer. This is done by a small program that runs on the Arduino. The numbers arrive in the computer via the USB cable that connects the Arduino to the PC. This same cable also provides the power to the Arduino. On the PC I run a software called Super Collider that allows me to read in all those numbers and use it to map it onto musical stuff. When these numbers arrive in the computer we can see that they are quite noisy. We don't see light variations with our eyes, but the sensors are very sensitive. In addition, no two sensors are exactly the same, so different sensors may output a slightly different value for the same amount of light. And this makes things difficult. For this reason, on the computer, before we do anything else, we will need to run a calibration routine. This calibration measures the output of all sensors, like 30 times, and then takes the worst results to get a realistic ID of the min and max numbers that each individual sensor can output. We do this with the sensors covered and again with the sensors opened. Once that is done, we can mathematically equalize or uh, condition the, in, the outputs of each sensor, so that they all have a comparable range. Many light-dependent resistor-based projects stop right about here. They just map the numbers, for example, to a frequency or a volume of some sound or an oscillator to create a kind of theremin. But I find this kind of direct mapping of sensor value to sound parameters way too limited. I would really like to have a way to use the sensors to specify complex commands. So I came up or I thought of inventing a kind of language consisting of patterns you can make on the sensors by selectively covering them. And this forms the second layer in the system. The raw sensor values as measured by the Arduino and conditioned by the calibration are now being observed by a simple pattern recognizer. 
The musician can specify which patterns should be recognized. A pattern in the end is just a collection of sensors. Every time such a pattern was recognized, a signal is given in the form of calling a callback function. The third layer in the system observes the recognized patterns and recognizes specific sequences of patterns. You can think of the patterns as forming words, whereas the pattern sequences form sentences. Again, it's up to the musician to specify which sequences to look for and what actions to take. In the demo, I triggered many different kinds of actions. Some had a temporary effect, like the bell sequences and the brassy synth improvisation. Other effects do not end, but keep on running forever and are changed when a given pattern sequence is detected. For example, there's a specific pattern sequence that means move to a next chord, where the chord and its voice leading are determined by the computer. But there is also a command to force the system to go to the tonic again. As an example of an even more complex command, I showed I could change the drum pattern. All the sound you hear is also generated by Super Collider by sending MIDI signals to an external synthesizer. Super Collider itself can generate sound too, but using an external sound source in this stage of the project takes away a lot of complexity related to sound design. I realize this is a more technical video than what I usually post on this channel. At the same time, there's a lot of details I did not explain, like how the pattern recognition system works in detail, or how I got the computer to compose chord progressions using two-dimensional Markov chains and voice-leading algorithms, or how I built a drum computer in Super Collider. But I will leave these details for other videos, posted on my second, more technical YouTube channel. If you like this type of content, I've done some pretty interesting projects in the past and I probably will make a few videos of these as well in the future. Be sure to let me know if such high-level overview videos should also be posted here or if I better keep them on my technical YouTube channel. Thanks for listening and see you next time. Bye! Thank you.